Today is March the 19th. Whatever happened to Judas? Let's find out together as we study Matthew 27. In Matthew chapter 27, um, starting in verse 1, very early in the morning, the leading priests and the elders of the people met again to lay plans for putting Jesus to death. Then they bound him, they led him away, and they took him to Pilate, the Roman governor. Now, Matthew follows at this point the story of Judas. We've been telling the story of the trial because that is what captures our interest as we uh, lead into Holy Week here. But let's see what happened with Judas. Verse 3, when Judas, who had betrayed him, realized that Jesus had been condemned to die. Apparently this is now after the trial and Jesus is being led away to the cross. When Judas realized that Jesus had been condemned to die, he was filled with remorse. So he took the 30 pieces of silver back to the leading priest and the elders. I've sinned, he declared for I betrayed an innocent man. What do we care, they retorted. That's your problem. So Judas threw the silver coins down in the temple, and he went out and hanged himself. Judas commits suicide. He starts by trying to do just what Pilate had done, he tries to avoid the guilt of his actions. He goes to the priests and he denies. But instead of going to Jesus and saying, I've sinned against you, he goes to a third party. He says, I've sinned, I've betrayed an innocent man. Makes us wonder what it was that Judas was actually trying to do when he betrayed Jesus. This quick turnaround that took place in just a matter of hours leads me to believe that what Judas was attempting to do when he betrayed Jesus, he was attempting to force Jesus' hand. He believed that Jesus was the Messiah. He believed that Jesus would lead a force against Rome, but he was taking his time to do it. Judas just couldn't understand what Jesus was now doing with the Roman crowd, um, why he was going in front of the Romans, why he was approaching them like he was. So he tries to force his hand. He tries to oblige him to become a military leader. He believes that if Jesus is faced with the choice between death and power, he'll take power. Judas certainly would have. Jesus chooses death. What do you think Judas thought now? He sees Jesus being led to the cross. He perhaps even watches as the nails are driven into Jesus' hands and his feet as he hangs on the cross. Then he goes out and he kills himself. Why? I believe it's because now he's convinced that Jesus was not the Messiah. You see, for Judas, it was all or nothing. If Jesus wasn't the military leader that he expected, he certainly couldn't have been the Messiah that Jesus said he was, who would come and die and rise again. Now, in the book of Acts, 
Acts chapter 1. We get just one verse about Judas. The disciples decide to replace Judas with the 12th member of the apostles. So in Acts chapter 1 verse 18, Judas had bought a field with the money he received for his treachery. Falling head first there, his body split open, spilling out all his intestines. The news of his death spread to all of the people of Jerusalem. They gave the place the Aramaic name Akeldama, which means the field of blood. Well, we go back to the book of Matthew. After Judas throws the coins into the temple, verse 6, the leading priest picked up the coins. It wouldn't be right to put this money in the temple treasury since it was payment for murder. Even though they were responsible for the murder, they wanted to make sure that the temple was clean. After some discussion, they finally decided to buy the potter's field. They made it into a cemetery for foreigners. That's why the field is still called the field of blood. Then it goes on, quotes a prophecy from Jeremiah that the potter's field bought for 30 pieces of silver is called the field of blood. Um, what these two uh, statements lead us to believe is that the temple leaders took the money and they decided to purchase a particular field to become a cemetery for foreigners. Judas, probably not knowing that, went out to that field, hung himself, and stayed there. Now, the Old Testament talks about the one who hangs from a tree. This is what it's actually talking about. Not Judas's death, but it talks about a man who commits suicide by hanging himself from a tree. Judas says, I'm cursed because I've betrayed an innocent man. Let me die the death of one who's cursed. He commits suicide by hanging himself his body is apparently not discovered for several days. When they finally do discover it, go to the potter's field to begin to prepare it for a cemetery for foreigners. They find Judas hanging there. They cut him down from the noose, and when he falls, his bloated body bursts. His intestines spill to the ground. That is uh, the traditional way of understanding Judas's death. What's important for us today, how do we perceive Jesus? Judas perceived him as the Messiah, but he wanted him to be his kind of a Messiah, not the kind of a Messiah that Jesus presented himself to be. How do we perceive Jesus today? Do we accept him because of what we want? We accept him as our escape from hell? We accept him as our help? We accept him as a miracle-working God who maybe, just maybe, might perform a miracle for us? Or do we accept him as the Son of God who comes to build a relationship with us, who comes to have us follow him, who comes so that we can become like him? What's your perception of Jesus today? Get the right one live by it. Like, 
follow and subscribe on whatever platform you use to listen to this devotion. If you have questions, send them to us at questions at becomehope.com. We'll see you on Sunday when we'll talk about the crucifixion.